You're getting hot and heavy with your partner. And as you get turned on more and more, slowly but surely, you hit that peak of pleasure. But have you ever wondered what makes it feel so darn good? Or what is happening to make that feeling possible? To anyone who's curious, let's explore the science of what happens before, during, and after an orgasm. The before. Believe it or not, but your orgasms start in your brain. It may sound a bit strange, but it's true. An orgasm starts with your cerebral cortex and your nervous system. There are a lot of processes going on. Many actions are interpreted as stimuli. So let us first look at what happens during arousal before your body climaxes. During arousal, your frontal lobe becomes active. This part is responsible for things such as motor function, memory, impulse control, and sexual behavior. In short, it helps you feel turned on. As you continue to receive stimulation, your hippocampus, in charge of memory, calls to mind past sexual encounters and helps you fantasize, arousing you even more. But the important thing about the hippocampus is that it assigns an emotional significance to the stimuli you are receiving. That's why sexual relations with your partner feel more emotionally charged. Next, the amygdala kicks in. The amygdala, usually responsible for fight or flight, drives up arousal. During foreplay and sex, it acts like a control center, sending emotionally charged moments to your prefrontal cortex. During. When looking at sex or sexual activity, people focus on the mechanical aspect that involves genitalia. But there are other factors at play and steps that need to happen in order to feel an orgasm. The stimulation of your genitalia releases a lot of neurotransmitters, dopamine, oxytocin, and various others. At the same time, your muscles are moving and convulsing bringing blood flow to different areas of your body and increasing nerve activity. The increase in blood flow and activation of nerves create greater sensitivity in the erogenous zones, areas of the human body that have heightened sensitivity, like the neck, lips, ears, thighs, nipples, and so on, as well as the obvious regions, clitoris, vagina, penis, or anus. Sensitivity in these areas further drives sexual activity and pleasure. It's the reason why some people enjoy kinky activities, like nibbling, caressing, or gently biting. This combination of increased blood flow and nerve activity, along with the mixing of so many feel-good chemicals, increases arousal and brings you just a few steps closer to orgasm. However, something else happens during genital stimulation. There is widespread activation in the brain, especially during orgasm. However, before reaching orgasm, your body switches to function on the parasympathetic nervous system. Don't be intimidated by the long name. This pathway of your central nervous system is what helps you feel relaxed, which in turn helps you get in the mood. Have you ever noticed that if you feel stressed, it's almost impossible to get turned on? That's because your parasympathetic nervous system isn't active. Next, during sex and orgasm, there are various regions that light up. Bear with me as I label them. Some have rather interesting names. The first ones are the nucleus accumbens and the ventral tegmental area. These two release dopamine at orgasm. The medial anterior hypothalamic region, another long name, releases oxytocin. The next four regions are interesting because they control pain and pleasure. Interestingly, if we were to look at sex from a mechanical standpoint, sex would be rather painful. The ones that help you feel pleasure instead of pain during sex and orgasm are the PAG, periacaductal gray, dorsal raph, and the anterior cingulate and insular cortices. The anterior cingulate and the insular cortices activate not only when you orgasm, but also when you receive pain stimulation. The PAG and dorsal raph are responsible for providing pain alleviation. These four working together help you feel pleasure instead of pain. You don't have to remember their names, just be grateful that orgasms are pleasurable instead of painful. Now, at the moment of orgasm, a lot of things are happening. Your muscles are convulsing, neurotransmitters are flooding your bloodstream, and part of your brain shuts down. Yep, the part of your brain that controls decision making shuts off. This explains why you might feel a bit out of control, involuntarily scream a bit louder, or make weird sounds or faces when you orgasm. 
After all that excitement, you enter a chill zone. This calm feeling is caused by serotonin. It makes you feel drowsy and promotes relaxation. This is why you're left feeling tired or sleepy. Dopamine and oxytocin are also released when you reach an orgasm, which leads you to feel great during and post-orgasm. Lastly, vasopressin is also released and it is associated with sexual motivation. While both males and females have it, it increases during male arousal and is responsible for creating feelings of attachment or possessiveness after sex. So there you have it, the science behind orgasms in a nutshell. It's a symphony of hormones, nerve endings, biochemical reactions, neurological fireworks that takes you through a roller coaster of emotions and sensory experiences and leaves you feeling fantastic. So next time you're getting down and dirty, remember, it's not just fun, it's science. What are your thoughts on this video? Let us know in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Psych2Go for more content. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.